holy crap, it has been three years since I moved to Singapore. Oh my gosh! Ah! What's up everybody? Oh my gosh, I'm so comfortable today. I'm literally just wearing sweats and wearing this super comfortable sweater because today is going to be a super chill chit chat me answering your FAQ type of video because it has been three years since I moved to Singapore, which is absolutely mind blowing. I think COVID really made my sense of timing just it absolutely just threw everything out the window, but it's been an amazing three years. I've been through some ups and definitely some downs, but definitely a lot of ups. And I am just really happy here in Singapore. So I put a question sticker thing on my Instagram story and asked you guys to submit your questions for me. Anything related to not just about living in Singapore, but just any questions you might have for me. And there were definitely a lot of reoccurring questions, which is why this is going to be me answering your FAQs. So let's get started. I've got all the goods in my phone, which by the way, how awesome is this Heinz ketchup phone case? <laughs> it's so cute. First question is, quickest way to your heart, Sherry? <laughs> well, if you show up at my door with a specialized bike and a bunch of Rafa jerseys, <laughs> just kidding. There is no quick way to my heart. I'm a complicated woman. I didn't actually prepare answers to these questions ahead of time because I wanted you guys to just hear the 100% unfiltered thought process, but I did kind of just categorize the questions really quickly. So, second question is, what made you choose Singapore over other countries to work at? That is a great question. I didn't actually choose Singapore to begin with because I got a job offer and the job required me to move to Singapore and then I started researching about Singapore. So I was really, really fortunate um, that I got that opportunity and it opened my eyes to the possibility that is out there. Honestly, when I was still living in Canada, I never planned to move to Singapore. I think if anything, I actually wanted to move down to the Bay Area because if you work in tech, you know, as a Canadian, Canadian, a lot of Canadians like to move down to like San Francisco and work there or a lot of people go to like Seattle or New York So Singapore was actually not necessarily on the top of my list But the moment I got an opportunity to move I did it just whoop, moved to the top and I am so happy I picked it All right, next question is would you do another round of RTI again? If you don't know what RTI is oh, Hello, you better go watch this video. Oh my gosh, the link is right here on the top right corner. Anyway, RTI is around the island, which if you live in Singapore means you're literally cycling around the island of Singapore. It's around like, depending on what route you go, around 120 kilometers. Uh, would I do another RTI? Answer is yes. Maybe I'll even try for more, but we shall see. I don't want to make false promises. And maybe I'll do another fundraiser because I think doing the RTI was 10 times more meaningful, not just because of the you know longest ride for me so far, but because it was a fundraiser. So I would love to do a longer ride again though. Actually, I think that even better is I would love to do that distance in other countries and start traveling with my bike, <laughs> which is so awesome. But we shall see how, you know, countries and VTLs and all that kind of stuff start easing up a little bit more. And then we shall see if I travel anywhere with my bike. I'll definitely document it if I do it though. There's a few similar questions, which is, if you had to move to another country for work, where would it be? What's next after Singapore? What's your next destination? What's your five to 10 year plan? I feel like I'm doing an interview. In five to 10 years, where do I see myself? This is a great question because I've actually been going through a lot of uh, life changes recently, which I will explain fully in another video. Right now, things are still a little bit up in the air, but TLDR career is undergoing a lot of changes for the better. And so we'll see where this career takes me. And so if it means I need to pack my bags and go elsewhere, then that shall be the plan. But if not, then I shall stay in Singapore because I really do like it here. I can tell you that I probably, not within the next five years, have any plans to move back to Canada though. So we shall see where I end up. But you know what, wherever I go, I'm actually really excited. It's part of the fun. I feel like I've definitely changed a lot. If you asked me like five years ago what my plan was for the next five to 10 years, I probably would have like everything written out very like meticulously. But nowadays I'm just trying to get through the week in, in a good way. Like I'm trying to have a North Star in life of where I want to be, but how I get there, I let the universe do its things and you know, opportunities come to those who are prepared. So I am just preparing myself for whatever life throws my way and then we will make the best out of it as we go through life. That's basically my answer. What do you usually do after work? As an expat, will you feel lonely going back home and having dinner alone? <sighs> this is funny because, you know what? 
Since it is a three year anniversary of me in Singapore, I will make a lot of references to past videos I did. If you saw that video, I talked about where I have no friends and I'm very lonely, which is gonna be right here. Back then, I really struggled with spending time alone to begin with, one. And then two, I, I was and I still am living alone. And you know what? In the last three years, I've definitely gotten a lot more comfortable just going home and cooking for myself and eating by myself. But one, I, I've definitely made friends since, you know, three years ago. So I do try to like slip in some social plans. But two, even if I do stay home, it's almost like I'm intentionally choosing to stay home because now I have the option to go out for dinner with friends, but I choose to prioritize self-care or alone time. So no, not, not anymore, to be honest. And uh, I love cooking, so that's fine for me and I love cooking and then putting things in Tupperware and throwing in my freezer and having like another four meals to eat for the for the next few days so yeah it's not bad for me okay the next question there's also a few similar ones which is when did Singapore start to feel like home or are you not there yet and how long did it take for you to officially set up life in Singapore hmm I moved here in the beginning of 2019 and so I would say Six months in, it already started feeling a little bit better. I think after the first like eight-ish months was when I really started getting comfortable with being in Singapore, started meeting, you know, my friends. And I, at the one year mark was when I think I felt extremely comfortable one to one and a half year mark so really I go back and watch my videos and I realize how much I've grown since then and how much more familiar I am with Singapore cycling definitely helped with that because I do recognize roads a lot better now um, but I do feel like even though I'm always out and about I feel like there's still a lot of things about Singapore that I still don't know so gotta educate myself I am also surviving alone in a big city how do you overcome loneliness and stress? So, I mean, there are definitely days I feel lonely, especially if it's gloomy outside. Generally, I kind of just remind myself that I chose to spend some time alone rather than I have no option but to be alone. And if you really didn't want to be alone, honestly, I've done the thing where I just go to cafes and I'm surrounded by human beings, even though I didn't make plans with anyone. I like to be in environments where it's just lively and happy and there's a little bit of background music. So that's usually what I do to combat um, the loneliness aspect, I suppose. And then on the stress aspect, oh, I've had my fair share of mental breakdowns before, for sure. I've definitely been like crying, very stressed out. I will say definitely less these days because I really learned to mitigate it earlier on. So I don't let myself get to the tipping point of having a full on mental breakdown. So like that's, personal growth for me was making sure that on a weekly basis I take care of myself self-care is so important whatever shape or form that may take it might be journaling it might be massages or getting your nails done or whatever it is um, in my case it's probably all of the above but there's definitely days that I just take to like I do not want to see any human beings I do not want to do work I don't know I just want to exist so my happy place which I would highly recommend you to find your happy place is one on a bike <sighs> I just love it. When I'm on a bike cycling, it may be four in the morning that I'm waking up, okay? But the moment I'm on the bike, my mind is just clear. I just feel so happy. I'm not focusing on anything else. I'm literally just focusing on being safe on the road and the beautiful sunrise that may, you know, you know, may see with Marina Bay Sands behind you and all that kind of stuff. So cycling is definitely my happy place. Second is going to a cafe to read or just work, I guess. When I say work, I don't mean like stress work. I mean just like doing personal admin and like personal finances at a cafe. Third happy place is massages. There was a period where I was going to Natureland in Singapore, which is a really popular massage chain here. I was going like once a week when I was really um, stressed out that period. So yeah, find what makes you happy and what allows you to shut your brain off. And also try to find people that are going to be there for you during the tough times. I remember one time I was extremely sad and my friend showed up with a little care package and a card and some sage and like a candle, I think. And we were just like having a heart to heart girls night. So definitely find your people. While we're on the topic of stress and us setting super ambitious goals and we're hustling out in here because it's 2022 but then we're also trying to take care of ourselves because our mental health is really important. I want to take this time to thank the sponsor of today's video which is Skillshare. So if you guys don't know what Skillshare is, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and they span a wide range so from photography to graphic design or even freelancing. I know a lot of you guys are really interested in the startup and tech scene here and so if you want to pick up 
skills about let's say UI design or you want to learn about entrepreneurship as a broad topic, you will find classes on Skillshare about that. Personally for me, I actually wanted to learn about things that were outside of my typical scope. So I wanted to focus a little bit more on you know learning, self-care, personal growth, and I don't mean just in the very businessy sense. So the one that I was doing was the one by Spencer Falls about everyday flowers. So it's literally called Simple Stunning Arrangements for Any Occasion. And it's so cool because even if you watch just the intro of that class, it's just so nice. It's about floral arrangements, but the fact that there's color and composition and texture as you do in like paintings and other types of artwork that are very common, he basically talks about how flower arrangements is a form of artwork as well because you have all those elements, but then also you have the element of fragrance and scent. So I thought that was really cool and I bought my first vase for the first time. So it definitely inspired me to just take some action and learn a new skill. So if one day I'm launching a flower bouquet service, you guys know what's up. Okay, if you're interested in checking out Skillshare, which I highly recommend you guys to do it, I have a link here, which I'll also leave in the description box, but the first 1,000 people will get a one month free trial to check out Skillshare and there are premium classes being added each week and it's all ad free. So enjoy my friends and family. Now moving on to the next few questions, which are kind of similar as well. Best and worst thing about living in Singapore slash pros and cons. There are so many things I love about living in Singapore. Um, I know a lot of people actually say that the weather is not the thing that they like because it's really hot, but I actually love the heat and I don't mind being a little bit sweaty because there's always AC just around the corner. I know another thing that most people think is a little bit annoying, but I actually quite like is Singapore is small and I'm not just talking population. I'm not just talking geography. It's just the world is really small. Obviously there are some, you know, potentially cons to it, but I personally think it's awesome because when I go, let's say to the CBD core downtown area, it's almost inevitable that I will bump into at least one person I know on like, let's say a Friday happy hour moment, I'm walking past the restaurants. So it's nice. It almost feels like you're in like university again and you're on the campus and you're bound to run into someone you know. So I quite like that because there's a sense of community and you know, you catching up with people over like the little short time frame of like you walking past each other. So yeah, I like that about Singapore a lot. The bad thing about Singapore, I did say I like the weather, but I am really not enjoying the rainy days here in Singapore, okay? Every year around March, I don't know if it's official monsoon season, which is like crazy raining season, okay? I remember looking at this diagram, which is pretty much like, when is monsoon season happening in Singapore? And there's like big monsoon and small monsoon. And basically when you add it all up, it's pretty much 12 months in a year, there's gonna be tropical rain. But I think especially around the time of my birthday in March, which is like this time frame, it's always raining and it's so unpredictable. Next question is favorite activity in Singapore with visitors. Ooh, there's a bunch. If I have visitors coming to town, first of all, I actually put together this Google Doc, which I informally made, but then started sending out to a bunch of friends and friends of friends who are coming to Singapore. I have a huge list of all my favorite restaurants and cafes and all that kind of stuff in a Google Doc, which I'm more than happy to share with you guys. I'll leave the link below. But I would say one of the first things I always bring tourists to go to is definitely around the Marina Bay area. Like you can't not go there, okay? You can start the day off going to Flower Dome, you can go to the Art Science Museum, which in my opinion is like one of the, or if not the best museum in Singapore. Super interactive, super fun. Kids love it, adults love it. Um, so Art Science Museum is really nice. Taking a walk around that area is also lovely. You can walk towards Fullerton area. There's so many restaurants. There's like casual ones, like super local Mexican food, but then there's like Kinky, which is like the Japanese restaurant. But then Fullerton also has a bunch of like, I think it's called Gin Parlor. There's a bunch of bars and places you can go to where you have a view of the Marina Bay Sands, you know, hotel. But then of course you can go to the top of Marina Bay Sands and you can go to Se La Lavo Spago, the three restaurants at the top of the famous boat. That's super lovely for like a sunset dinner slash drink situation. And Gardens by the Bay, of course. And also, I don't know if they've resumed it yet because of COVID, but every night at every hour, there's a 10 minute water show that's free outside of Marina Bay Sands, right near the Apple Store Dome, which is also another landmark pretty much for people visiting. Anyway, I love that water show. It is one of my favorite things about Singapore. I have teared up watching that water show because they play Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, which is a song I love. Uh, if you guys have not listened to it before, 
I highly recommend you to. Yeah, so I think you can literally spend a whole day just around that entire Marina Bay area. You can even walk on the Helix Bridge. It's just so nice. Like, and then you can do a picnic at the barrage, which is like a little bit down. There's a hawker center on the way to the barrage. I just love this area so much. So I would do that with some tourists in town. Roast or steamed chicken? Steamed chicken. Oh, gotta love steamed chicken, man. And always, always, always gotta get the chicken rice, like the actual chicken juice soaked rice. So good. How do you surround yourself with boss um, surround yourself with a sherry in your life. <laughs> just kidding. I've done a full video about how to make friends, not just in Singapore, but in a new place, which I'll put right here. Definitely go watch that video, even if you have friends, because I think there's some cool ways you can meet even more people. I'm very lucky. I met one friend and then we got along really well. And then through her, I met other people. And then through them, I met other people. And then also I met people on Bumble BFF here in Singapore. So you got to put yourself out there. Three years already. Can you make best brunch spots slash places to eat in Singapore? Best brunch spots spots off the top of my head, okay? The more extensive list is in that Google Doc I talked about. I really like Populous for food. This is Utrum Park area. Lovely uh, French toast, if I remember correctly. I really like going to Dempsey for brunch as well. There's a PS Cafe Dempsey. Super lovely, tons of greenery around. Of course, you can go to Chamberwood Bakery. It's more of just like getting a croissant and like being able to be in the neighborhood of Chamberu. If you're in Chamberu as well, definitely go check out 40 Hands. You're going for good food. Like, and also you will feel so stuffed for the next three hours. Oh, of course, Clinton Street Bakery. Best pancakes in Singapore, hands down. Every single person I brought there loves it. So so good, so good. Trust my words on it. I hope I don't disappoint anyone. And then there's of course Toledo's, uh, which is near Kalang area. Always, always, always aligned. So if you're gonna go, go on a weekday and start heading there before it even opens so you can get a table. I would say those are the top of mind places for food. And then there's a lot of places where you're going for the vibe, which is pretty much like any other place along Robertson Key area by the river. So you're definitely going for vibes. Guys, there's a lot of repeat questions here, which means this is definitely an FAQ. Will you live in Singapore your whole life? How long do you plan on staying in Singapore? Do you plan to start a family here? Do you miss home? Would you consider going back? Do you plan on settling down in Singapore? How long do you plan on staying in Singapore? What kept you in Singapore for so long? <gasps> what kept me so long in Singapore? <laughs> COVID? Just kidding. I would stay here even if there was no COVID. I love it here in Singapore. And honestly, I feel like this past one-ish year is when I really, really just feel like it is home and I have my favorite people here. Obviously my family's in Canada, but outside of my family, like my closest friends are now all in Singapore. My professional network is also very Southeast Asia heavy now, which is great. And I feel like very, very happy. And I feel very honored to be able to live in Singapore as well. So I see it as definitely as such a privilege. And yeah, I, I don't have any plans to move anytime soon, um, but if I do, you guys will find out very soon, but not right now. <laughs> How's the cycling culture there? Granted, I've only started cycling like maybe four or five-ish months ago, so I'm still definitely a newbie, but people have been so nice. I joined the Rafa Cycling Club in Singapore. Everyone is so, so nice and so welcoming, and I've been cycling a lot with my friends outside of the RCC crew as well. Cycling culture in terms of the cyclists, really lovely people, all super friendly, super amazing, and always giving me tips in a really kind way. And in terms of how the roads are for cycling, I wake up pretty early, like usually 4, 4.30 a.m. I'm already awake. And so meeting times are generally quite early, especially if it's Rafa guys who meet at like 5.30, so I have to allocate time to get to the starting point. But because it's so early in the morning, I actually pretty much like avoid a lot of the morning traffic. So I try to wrap up before it starts to get busy. So it's not that bad, but I've definitely made lifestyle changes. So I think if you cycle more on like the hot hours of the day, then it's gonna be not so fun because there's gonna be a lot of cars on the road. Also, one thing I forgot to add about cycling in Singapore is that because it's so freaking hot, it's like 30 something degrees, most people generally try to finish cycling by like 7.30 or 8 a.m., which is hilarious because on the days I'm not cycling, that's pretty much what time I'm waking up at. It's either like 4 a.m. or it's like 9 a.m., okay? There's no in between for sure. <laughs> what do you miss about Singapore when you're overseas? That's a great question because I was just four weeks in North America. I was in Vancouver, Toronto, San Francisco, LA, and down to San Diego. So visited a lot of different places and uh, where do I even begin, man? Like one, cleanliness of the streets. Like there is no garbage. Like I don't think I ever see garbage on the street, okay? Uh, two, safety. You cannot not, you know, embrace how safe it is in Singapore. As a female, I can go running when it's like 11 p.m. at night and I will run through a park and I wouldn't have to worry about getting like kidnapped So it's really nice to be able to live in such a safe place three 
the buildings are beautiful like if you haven't been to Singapore okay aside from Marina Bay Sands which obviously is a really iconic building there's just a lot of beautiful buildings Park Royal on Pickering with all the greenery outside it's just so lovely and it is really like super urban but then you've also got a lot of nature in embedded in it so it's just like the perfect combination okay so I really love those things about Singapore and I definitely definitely missed it when I was back in Canada slash in the States one thing I forgot to add is I really miss the good Asian food when I'm not in Singapore so I have this really funny thing where when I'm in a Western country I always crave Asian food but when I'm in Asia I always crave Western food so there's just no winning for Sherry last but not least the final question definitely has to be about food which is what is your favorite hawker dish slash local food okay hawker dish I honestly really have to say chicken rice like I can eat that so many times it's so good also when I get chicken rice I definitely order extra chicken as well because that like four or five pieces of chicken is not gonna suffice okay so I love my chicken rice and it's steamed chicken <laughs> so good but honestly i love all types of food when i go to a hawker center you can't not say yes to saute you can't not say yes to the omelets it's just so good and in terms of local food there's a place that i really love going it's on kyongsak road in tanjong pagar um, called koksen super delicious food and i cannot wait to go back there's always a million people at that restaurant but it's very local super good food super great authentic vibes so i really want to go back soon actually anyway so these are all the questions you guys asked me for today uh, happy three years in singapore to me and i guess to you guys since you guys have been watching me in singapore for three years thank you guys so much for your support throughout the years you've seriously seen me go through some pretty big ups and downs before um, whether it's career or friendship and loneliness and all that and you know it's trying new things even like cycling it's been a really really lovely three years and i wouldn't have it any other way maybe minus covid but i wouldn't have it any other way in terms of the people i met the things i've experienced it really shaped me into the person i am today and i definitely do feel like i've changed immensely in the last three years so i hope many more years to come in the meantime Keep hustling you guys but take care of yourself i'm gonna do the same and i will see you in my next video bye bye